Got a pickup truck with a dog box Slam full of hounds that don't know when to stop Until the old male Rambo's his name He's quick on his feet, hell on game Got a little chip in the back of the pack She ain't real fast, but she's true on the track She's got to drive and she's got the guts And that's why she's gonna run with us It's in the blood in your veins, you can't Time is passed down through your family name. It's a pack of dogs coming through the pines. Lights of fire in a young boy's eyes. It's the word of the hound. It sounds just right. It's dog time. Hey everybody, I'm on the road again. The Huntsville Spotlight Series is back. This is season two, episode one. Jeff Rickless with Hobo, the 2023 Tournament Champions winner. Heading to his place, it's gorgeous out right now. It's about 60 degrees, clear blue skies. So hope you enjoy this video and thanks for watching. Back. Come here. Billy, here. Oh, my number. You put me. Overtired Cabo. Props are hardly up around here. Right. How you doing, bud? That's a nice one. Yeah. On the pro runoff. Hall of Fame. Induct the old Henry. I'm kind of gray faced like old Cabo. Well, oh, that's when I won Walker Day. 2000. I won it two years with him. I thought it was back to back. I that's need a nice cover. Yeah, I need to find that. I need to find that magazine and because there's a. Uh, they did a real big write up. I guess I skipped a year. I won Walker Day's. 2000 and 2002, I guess they did an article on me when I won the Nationals. I actually won that National with, this is just a top 16 plaque, but I actually won it that year. That's Mr. Clean. Oh, okay. You probably didn't even know I handled him. At no, all. I didn't. I didn't handle him very long. Um, Brian up with it on me. And I can't remember, we made a deal for uh, Russ Meyer Invitational. And I didn't have anything to hunt out there. He said, yeah, he's watching that clean. It was a month or so before. I said, well, I said, I, need, I want to get him so I can learn because I didn't know him. And I said, I'd like to take him to a few hunts. He said, take him anywhere you want. I said, he's qualified for that AK. That's when it was pretty big. Yeah. They gave away a truck one year and this Jeez. was like the year after that. I think we, I think it was 10,000 for first place, but. Okay. So when did you start coon hunting? I started coon hunting when I was nine or 10 years old. Uh, I lived in um, in between West Lafayette and a little town called Otterburn, and I went to school uh, with a boy that lived about two miles north of me. We lived in the country, and then they had like hogs and sheep, and um, his stepdad um, coon hunted. He was a big farmer, and there was about three families of farmers that all hunted together. Hmm. The one family competition hunted a little bit, and um, but mostly they just, you know, hides it. You know, coons were high then. Mm -hmm. So they'd, they'd all get together on the weekends and coon hunt. And um, I'd go up there. The, I was in school with a boy. We got to know each other. And um, so I'd go up there and help them on the weekends. I'd stay up there and do chores, you know, with the hogs and the sheep and everything. And then um, it took me coon hunting. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just from the very first time. It's unbelievable how, I mean, I was infatuated with it. I knew nothing about it at that time, <laughs> yeah. but I knew it was cool that you could turn dogs loose and they'd tree a raccoon up a tree, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I was about nine or ten. Um, what what breed of dog did you start with? Like with those people? They had mixed. Mixed dogs. I mean, dogs. they had the one family that did a little competition, and they were they were kind of black and tan guys, but they they would have a walker here or there and an English dog. Um, 
My first dog that I ever got that was a purebred coon hound was actually a black and tan that was, um, I don't know if you've, you've probably heard of him, um, Hunsucker, Art mm -hmm. Hunsucker from Illinois. Um, I had another friend that I'd met and in Lafayette, he was a black and tan guy and he got to be friends with Art Hunsucker. So I bought a puppy and um, I, don't, I honestly can't remember exactly how old I was then, but I didn't have, I didn't have license. Yeah. So it was kind of hard for me to hunt. <laughs> and, uh, but this dog, he never really got a chance and he got loose um, and was missing for a couple of days. He'd come back, he'd been hit by a car and, oh, geez. and this and that. So yeah, so that was my first one. He never really did anything, but um, my first dog that would actually was a decent old coon dog. It was a blue tick that I <laughs> bought from a hillbilly. Um, he lived in Crawfordsville, Indiana, and he was from Kentucky. And um, I think I paid five hundred dollars for him. And um, he, I, I don't think I had my license, and it was right there about the time I was getting ready to get my yeah. license. And uh, yeah, I had him for a while. He was a he was a good one. Um, I mean, as far as just going out and training coons for a, a kid's first dog, yeah. real easy to handle. wasn't a big hunting dog or nothing. So. And then my, but my first good, really good dog, um, I bought. She was young, 14, 15 months old. Old. I bought off Bruce Jansen, which there. I don't know if you ever heard of Bruce, but he's a he's a he's a good dog man, great dog man. He he hunted a lot of Beller stuff. Um, Russell would go buy a dog and he'd send it to Bruce and say hunt it for a month and tell me what I got you know and Bruce he, he's still to this day he's in his 70s now he still hunts about every night but um I bought a young walker female off him he told me he said if you can lay with this one she's wild and crazy he said you'll have some and he just he kind of grinned and he, he didn't know if I could do it but yeah. I set out her name was Jackie and I mean I was just ate up with Kuna. so I remember I kept track I hung her 63 nights in a row without taking a night off. Jeez. I made her, I made her something that um, she was wild and crazy until the day she died, but placed in the top 20 of a few world hunts with her, made her grand night champion. That was back before PKC ever came up in this area. And um, so I don't even think I ever entered her in PKC. So I hunt UKC, ACHA, AKC, stuff like that. But yeah, she was a, she was a good one. So that was my first really good dog. When did you start competition hunting then? I I put that old that blue tick in a couple oh, months yeah. right around you know I was sixteen or whatever. But then I didn't really start um, really getting into it until I was probably eighteen or nineteen. Mm -hmm. That's when I had Jackie. Okay. Um, I really started rolling then and never looked back since then. You know, it's been full bore ever since. <laughs> And how long have you been doing it? I'm 60. <laughs> so 40, 40 some years. I mean, 50 years if you're counting really when you first started. Hunting, you know, yeah. But yeah, it's the only time I, honestly, in 60, well, 50 years of doing it. You know, that's sporadic when I was a kid going with people and stuff. But since I really started going in my teens, there was a two year period where I moved to Florida and I didn't have a dog down there. But once I came back, I mean, I can't remember <laughs> a time where I didn't have a dog and didn't hunt pretty hard. I mean, when I was hunting for guys and hunting dogs for people and stuff, I mean, I hunted six, seven nights a week. I mean, when I hunted for Burgesses with old Henry and I hunted for Strickland, those are when I started doing it full time, you know, that, that was my job and I took it like a job, you know, I hunted. But I ate up with it. I loved it. <laughs> I wanted to go every night, you know. I'll never forget I was I'd go to John lived in Savannah. I'd go down there in the wintertime and hunt. When the weather was bad up here. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget it's New Year's Eve. And him and his wife were getting ready to go out. Well, what do you his wife's like, what are you gonna do tonight, Jeff? You wanna go with us? I said, no, I'm going coon up. She goes, Oh my god, would you get a life? That's all you do. You know, I'm like, I wanna go coon hunting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I, um, I, mean, I've, I hunt hard, I, you know, still to this day, I hunt hard enough now, I hunt, you know, what needs to be hunted for yeah. the dogs I have. 
you know, like I told you earlier with Hobo, I, you know, if, if I got a hunt on the weekends, I'll hunt a couple nights during the week, maybe three, depending on what kind of hunt I got. If I don't, I'll try to hunt three or four nights, you know, throughout the week. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to hunt six or seven anymore, really. I still love it, but I cannot let the dog get out of shape because it eats on me. I know I got to have that dog in shape to be yeah. competitive. So it that drives me, you know. And my wife is, shouldn't you be hunting tonight? Don't you <laughs> get that dog ready? You know, I mean, she's great about that. So, you know, I still love it, but um, you just do it, I've done it so long, it, that drives, I mean, it's not, I still love, like I said, if it wasn't for competition hunting, I probably wouldn't. I have a lot of people ask me that. If you weren't competition hunting, now, would you still have a dog? And I don't know that answer. Probably would for a little while, maybe, because you know I, I love that competition. You know, mm -hmm. it's like playing basketball or baseball or whatever. That's I want to win. You know, and is it about the money? Yeah, you know, the money is great, but it's just the competing. You know. Yeah. Um, so. I don't know. I probably wouldn't do it for a little while, but then I'd probably still want to go some, you know, because <laughs> yeah. I still, I still love to coon hunt. But and you've done it long enough too that you did it for the money is kind of new as far as the amount of money yeah. you can win. Oh, I've, I mean, even great. in my lifetime, you could win some money, but it was more about the, just the prestige of winning yeah. an event and just competing against other top people and winning. Right. Where I think the the money aspect is just in the last 10 or 15 years really really taken off yeah and it's um i gotta admit now the the money drop it does drive me i mean you know, we we built this place five years ago and it's you know it, a lot of the a lot of coon hunting paid for a lot of stuff here i mean <laughs> i look back you know i mean it's like we we both work my wife's got a great job but nowadays you know you can win enough money that it, it changes it changes your life I mean mm -hmm. maybe not your life I mean if I never want another penny we're fine and you know we got what we got and I mean, but man it there's a lot of extras you can do with that extra money so <laughs> it, it drives me a little bit at this age especially you know yeah like ah you know if I if the money wasn't out there I might not have the drive to want to go as much yeah. know, to these hunts but I, you know I got my back fixed a little over a year ago um, how that I was about done competition and I if they didn't get it fixed, I was going to be done because it was almost embarrassing. I, I mean, I'd have to stop and stretch my back so much, and I felt bad keep holding the cast up. It, it was bad, you know, and I, I knew that, so I wasn't going to very many. I was trying to pick and choose where I would. I knew I wouldn't have to hunt a late round, or, you know, this or that. If I did have to hunt a late round, I was just absolutely miserable trying to <laughs> hunt it because I was in so much pain. Yeah. So that changed my life, too. Uh, and then I've lost some weight here the last few months. Um, there again, it's changed again that I want to go now. I mean, I, I can keep up pretty good and my back feels great. So yeah, it's, you know, brought some new life back into me. So yeah. hopefully keep rocking for a while. When you have a young dog, what do you, like what's your process for getting one ready from just like starting to tree coon to trans, like more of competing, I guess. You know, and that's for years now, Every time I go to the woods and unsnap a dog, it's it's all about competition. Competition. Yeah. You know, I I eat, breathe, sleep competition. <laughs> so anything that I train on that dog, it's always towards a competition. So winter young, you know, recast it off trees is big. Um, you don't want them going back. Um, then when they get a little farther along, setting them up. So I'm, you know, I like a dead loner, so I try to set them up. You know where they're not going to cover. Um, do a lot of that. Um, yeah, it's just that's about it, and just you know getting them to where they can compete. You know, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I you know I haven't trained a lot of young dogs lately, and I you know a lot of people don't even know I trained dogs back in the day. Um, but I raised my own and trained a lot when I was younger. I mean, just because I didn't have the money to go buy dogs. Right. I've been very fortunate through the years now that. Burgess and, and Strickland especially keeps me in a good dog but that doesn't mean you're you're training every night mm -hmm. I don't care if they're 10 years old you're still training but as far as taking a young dog the, the, um, it's been a couple years though I hunted the change dog that just placed third in the nationals Stephen and Billy and them 
when he hunted for a couple months. And um, when he was real young, he was just starting to tree coon. Um, they knew they probably had something, but they live in a really bad spot to try to train a pup. Yeah. I said, well, it's been a while, but I'll take him up here. And I, I enjoyed that. He was, but he was ready. I mean, he was, he'd fire and he'd tree coon. Now he did a lot of running in fields and this and that. I had to, I had to work on a lot of little things, but I'm, I'm fine with that. I've just, I've never been good at taking puppies, raising them up and getting them started and finishing them. Now I can take one, as long as they'll leave me and do something. I'm, I can I can finish him. It's not something I want to do anymore, though. It's, yeah, I really don't. I mean, I just want to have you know, even if they're just a couple years old, I just want something that's pretty st steady already, and I can you know keep them on the right track and maybe tune them up a little bit. Hobo was easy. I mean, he was already coon dog, 16 months old when we bought him. <laughs> I mean, he was flat a coon dog at 16 months old. It, it was unbelievable you know, how mature he was and what he did. I mean. I want a thirty some thousand dollars on him before you turn two. Jeez. I mean, he just was. Mike Gilbert did. did he just, he's an awesome pup man, and and Hobo was just a natural, you know. And Mike hunts every night, you know. He he's same thing. He's every every single turn loose um, that he does. It's he knows what they need. He's training them to be a competition dog, you know. So he was ready when we got him. I've just kind of kept him on that line and kept him going. So. I guess going through the years, what are some of the bigger name dogs that you've handled? So, the the bigger name dogs that people would know, um, Bad Habit, Hardwood Henry. Um, Hardwood Henry is my really first one that got m probably me noticed as far as a handler. Um, I knew people and they kind of knew me from some hunts. I hunted old Henry's Quick Stop back in the day. That was an old dog. But I went to a few pro hunts back then and um, Cadillac style. Um, but people still didn't know me very well back then. I had a little bit of winning with those dogs, but Henry put me on the map as far as winning and uh, really as far as a handler. So Henry was first, and then Bad Habit, and then went to uh, oh, Wild Bill. Uh, I forgot a uh, Wipeout Clayton. <laughs> I actually won the uh, national championship with Wipeout Clayton. Um, Hardwood Jenny, she was off of Henry, and um, that was a good one John owned. Um, the Wild Bill Dog, Cabo, you know, those are, I'm trying to think, some uh, um, hunted, hunted a little 10 female, we did quite a bit of winning with her, and um, I'm about to go back there and whip that dog. <laughs> it's getting dark. He must, see the, he must see the cat back there. Yeah. I heard a coon squalling in the woods a little bit did ago. You? Yeah. Hey! Hey! <laughs> but uh, so yeah, those are probably the most well-known ones that uh, wipe out Blaze, um, Hardwood Ann, Buddy Deletri won the Super Stakes with her, and I hunted her after John bought her. Whitey Gal, uh, she was one got second in the Super Stakes with her. Um, I see, I forget all these. Got Jack, Jack Mayhem. Um, I won Futurity with him. He, we didn't have him a long time, but uh, Jackie Coomer, uh, Jack Cannon, Jim Smith had him, and Jack Coomer hunted him. Well, Rick Vogel, too, was part owner on that, and then they sold him to uh, Vogel owned. They, I guess Strickland bought Cannon and Smith out, and then I hunted him some, and that's when I won the Futurity. So there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of them through the years, but as far as the ones that really put me on the map, no. Yeah. Those were the main ones. Over the years, have you had a preference in hunting males or females? Oh, yeah. Me and John are completely opposite. <laughs> I'm a male dog man by yeah. far. And he says he'll never buy another male. Now, really? Especially. He's, he's, I mean, he's hunted a few males through the years, of course, but now he's really sold on these females, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I just, and my only, the, the really the only reason I have a big preference on a male dog is I can't stand that heat process. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many times. I, I mean, I still I still hunt a female once in a while. I mean, I'm probably going to get one of those females that John's hunting right now up here at, at some time, and, and I'll hunt one. But uh, I don't know how many times. I because I had some well, the, like I told you, Jackie, and then I had one named Trixie that was mm -hmm. off Pac Man. You know, I had some females when I was younger. Man, I don't know how many times I'd be get ready to go. 
go to a big hunt, I'd go out there, get ready to load up, and be bleeding. Yeah. Just that's what really hurt me when I was young. It killed me. I'm like, I, I don't want to deal with that. You know, you, a lot of guys say, "Well, males in heat all the time." Well, they're not. I mean, <laughs> you, just, you got the right one. It's, but yeah, it's, I definitely prefer a male. No. Yeah. And that's really the only reason. I mean, I'm not saying males are better than females. It's just that's aggravating. Yeah. Usually, two weeks before they come in heat, they act idiots, and then while they're in heat, you can't hum. Then two weeks afterwards, they act like <laughs> it's, idiots. It's at it's, least a month process. Yeah. So. Yep, that's it. So how did you get connected with John? I was hunting Henry for John Burgess. And um, I'd hunted Henry for Brad Fleetwood when he was real young. And then I went to work for John Burgess and we, he bought Henry for me. And it was just, I'd met John at a couple hunts, but I did not know him at all because he was in Georgia and I was up here. And we see each other at pro hunts here and there but we didn't know each other really and I, he called me and I don't remember how he got my number or how it, I don't remember how it exactly worked out we just started talking on the phone and um, and at a few hunts mm -hmm. and then just out of the blue he said why don't you come down here I was hunting full time for Burgess so coon hunting was my job I'm like it wasn't like I couldn't go yeah. hey, why don't you come down here and stay with me and we'll, go, you know, we'll coon hunt and um, so I went down there I don't remember what dog he even had at the time. I don't think he had habit yet, but um. So we, I stayed down there a week maybe, and we hunted. We got to be really good buddies, and then, um. I started. Uh, I'd hunted for John for, it lasted a couple years probably. Maybe three. I don't remember. But then John, Burgess, he he um, called me to his, he said to come over, you know, come to his house. And he said I. I've had about enough of the coon hunting, you know, which we knew he was he was probably going to be that way, just really hot and heavy for a while. But he said, "I'm going to be probably I'm done, you know, this and that." Well, you know, I was I was doing it for a living, so I was kind of like, "Oh, what am I going to do now?" <laughs> so all that was we talked, and he told me what he was going to do with the truck and dogs and this and that. John, John Burgess always treated me excellent, I, and he did when when he quit coon hunting. He still took care of me. I mean, he gave me the company truck I was driving. He gave it to me. He gave me the young dog we were hunting. I mean, he was he was a good guy. But I still didn't. I was kind of out of a job, you know. So I, I remember I left. I called Strickland. I was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Burgess just quit. Blah, blah, blah. John kind of laughed. He said, I know what you're going to do. I said, what's that? He said, come hunt for me. <laughs> That's that's what happened. I've yeah. been hunting for him pretty much. He took a little hiatus there for a few years when he when he quit for a little bit. Just um, oh, he's had a new business going. He got divorced and had just had some irons in the fire. So yeah. he had um, quit for a little bit. And that's when Greg Dunlap come into play. Um, uh, he we bought Wild Bill. Actually, John and Greg bought Wild Bill together right there right before John quit. And then John quit, so Greg. Um, I hunted for Greg, I don't remember how many years, but several years there. And then John come back into the scene again, and uh, so I, and Cabo was getting old, so I went back <laughs> hunting for John. But yeah, we've stayed friends all through that time, though. John's as good as they come. I mean, he, he takes care of me. Couldn't ask for a better owner. If you can remember the biggest ones, what are some of the biggest hunts you've won? So, uh, the national championship. 2009 with Clayton, 2006 truck hunt, I won with Henry, um, I won the, let's see, I won Walker Breed Days, which went, it was a big, big, big deal, um, I won it two years, um, multiple pro hunts, uh, I can't, can't even name all the pro hunts, um, <laughs> pro runoff, I won with Wild Bill. Um, I never have that. About the only thing of the Futurity I won, um, Super Stakes. The only thing I haven't won that I can that I really really is World Hunt. Yeah. I've been in the Final Four of the UKC World Hunt. I've been. At, we kind of kept track with Cabo, especially. I don't know how many top sixes of World <laughs> Hunts. It's unbelievable, but I'd never, I couldn't get that top six, you know, you win that caster in the final three. I never could get through that 
hmm. that round. It was unbelievable. I don't know. Honestly, I do not remember how many top sixes I was in, and top tens, and top twelve, top twenty, um, all through the years with different dogs. But I've just never won one. Yeah. That's the, so of course that's that's on my hit list. I, <laughs> I mean, it has been forever though. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you know, the national. A lot of people think that the nationals is harder to win than the world hunt, and it might be because everything there is qual has done some winning, you know. And I did win that, and um, actually, I don't know, I don't know how many other people do. I know this year when um, Steve Yant just won it, I was texting back and forth. I knew he'd been in the final four several times, and um, I asked him how many times he'd been in it four times now. Jeez, that's how many times I've been in it. Yeah. And what was crazy, I was batted for the cycle. I've actually got a first, a second, a third, and a fourth. <laughs> That's what I've done in the national. So that, you know, before Steve did it, won it this year, I don't think anybody else had ever been in the final four that many times of the national championship. So that hunt's been really good too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of my favorites. But yeah, it's time for the world hunt to be nice to me now. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. Hobo, Hobo's capable. I mean, yeah, but I've had a bunch of dogs that are capable of winning the world. I mean, it's just like, just haven't done it. You know? Yeah. Just, things got to fall together. That's it. But we'll see. I got I got ninth last year with Hobo in the UKC World Cup. Yeah. I thought I might have a chance with him last year down there but in the final. So. And how old is he now? Three. So he was two of them? Yeah. So. He'll be four here in July. Okay. So he's getting close to four. But he's got a few more good years left in him. For sure, he's just now coming into his prime. So. What's he out of? He is off of a dog called Josie Wales that Mike Gilbert raised. Now Jeremy Michaelis and Kurt Erring Pony. Okay. Um, and he is out of. He. Long story short, to go back through the blood, blood so people will know what he goes back to is Big D. Oh, okay. And on the top, and then on the bottom, he's out of a female named Casey, which was the same thing Mike Gilbert, Chuck Cliver owned, and she was out of a, another bitch named Casey, that was a, a well-known reproducer. And on the bottom side, same thing to go back to where the people will remember some of the dogs, not the new Frogger dog, but there was an old dog, an old dog named mm -hmm. Frogger, that's on his bottom side, and. Um, I can't remember if it's the top or bottom side of the female. Um, goes back to Beller stuff. Okay. So like Fred, um, I can't remember. Like uh, maybe Doc is back in there. Beller's Doc and those dogs. Handsome Doc, Handsome Fred. Uh, some of those dogs are on his bottom side. So that's what he's really. Okay. Is there anything else you want to add before we go hunt? No. Just, uh, just thank everybody that's. You know, text me after this big TOC win. It, it's <laughs> been it's been unbelievable. Every, and every hunt I've went to since then, you know, I get a lot of people coming up. It's been definitely overwhelming. It's it's been it's been awesome. But you know, thank my wife and and um, for like I said, she's one of my biggest supporters. She makes me go hunt. So. <laughs> and thank you for coming over and filming. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. Oh, Yo, absolutely. And then we'll, you know, I want to thank. Uh, just Havoc Hunt Supply takes care of me. Those guys are awesome guys. Stephen Smith, Ryan Eady. So, got to say thanks to them. And mm -hmm. Native Dog Food. Native Dog Food has been my go-to <laughs> for 14 years now. And uh, they're they're great. So, other than that, and of course, well, I absolutely got to thank John Strickland and, and Doug Galbraith and them guys. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be going up and down the road. They're just, I kind of take, take it for granted sometimes when you hunt for somebody like that. Because yeah. They're just so easy going. I, like I, I've said it before on podcasts or whatever, that and, or talking to people that if I called John tonight and said, "Hey, there's a hunt in China tomorrow night," he said, "Well, get on a plane and go." I mean, he does not care. He, I can go anywhere I want. And he's always been that way. He's, he's a, he's a great guy. So you get to go down there Tuesday and film him. Yeah, that'll be good. I'll You'll be, have fun. I'm sure I will. He see some good dogs. Too. Yeah. <laughs> His hunting ain't gonna be as good as mine. But <laughs> it never is. Anytime I go far from home, down there. I know. If his we, aren't moving, it's not good. We're blessed where we live. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are blessed. I say that now. Tonight we won't even trip in. No, I don't. I don't think that's gonna. Happen. <laughs> no. It's really, really nice out. It is. <laughs>
All right, well, it's getting about that time. Yep. About time, I'll go get changed, and I'll be right. You want to tell me a little bit about kind of how you got to get this dog and hunt with him? Yeah, we uh, so I was hunting a little female for John named Ten, first and Ten. She was pretty well known, um, pretty good little dog at times, but she was so inconsistent that I about had my fill of her and 
so we were looking and we tried three or four dogs and a really good friend of mine josh watson from georgia and um shane stevenson a buddy of ours they were they were riding up together from georgia and they were coming to mike gilbert's to go hunting and i knew this dog placed in that pro hunt but i never paid no attention mike's always got a pretty good young dog but i never thought about trying to buy him or whatever at that time but so they were driving up and they called me they knew i was looking and they were quizzing me they're like we're coming you know that hobo dog he placed in the super stakes he said i or in the pro hunt shane's like i got first chance and i'm they'd been hunting with him since he's seven eight months he was training coons at seven eight months old and they said it was kind of like a freak at that age even so at that moment he told gilbert that he wanted the first chance at him because mike you know that's what he does he trains them up and then he sells them so mike had called him that week and said hey i'm just letting you know that's about all i can do with hobo he's at that point he said i'm ready to start on another one so they really had all the dogs they needed shane's like i hate to give him up but he said i know you guys are looking i said man i said you ought to let us look at him he said that's what we're calling you for he said i'll call mike he said, and i'll tell him let you guys come look at him and but if you guys don't buy him i'm going to tell him to hold off that that i'll probably take him but i want you guys to look at him. so i called strickland immediately and and you know gilbert's kind of halfway in between me and john i said i want you to come up and go with me i mean i've tried many dogs without john and he takes my word for it but i you know it wasn't that far i wanted him to come he said yeah i'll come so i think i called mike and i think we went like that night like the next night maybe and went down there and like i said we looked at him and turned him loose with apollo and he treated a couple coons and then we turned him loose with four dogs and he treated a couple more coons and we were hunting state ground that gets pounded and it was december <laughs> and uh yeah so i'm like he's looked this good and I'm, I'm thinking i said something to mike he said well any dog could treat them easy ones i wanted to show you could treat these hard ones <laughs> uh, we were laughing well we were driving around to get him well we had said something i had said something to mike he's he said, yeah, we'll get out of here, the state ground after this drop. And so I jumped in the truck with John and we were following Gilbert around there. And uh, I said, well, I think Mike's gonna take us some better hunting now. John looked at me and said, why? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, why do we need to see him? He said, what else is he gonna show us? And I said, well, you're the one paying $20,000 for him, you know. <laughs> I said, you don't wanna see him go? He said, I don't know what else we're gonna see. He's looked great. He said, if you want him, he says, he's looked great. I don't know what else he can show us, you know. I said, I'm good with that. So we drove around and parked and we got out, or I got out. John said, I'm gonna set up the truck and get this money ready for him. We just all, a couple guys that was with us and stuff, we all jump out and we walk him down this field edge to go around to go hobo. And, Mike looks around. And he said, "Where's John?" I said, "He's getting your money ready." And he <laughs> laughed. He said, "Okay." So yeah, we we bought him that night. I, there's not been a moment that I've been disappointed that we bought him. There's, it's uh, he's one of my favorites for sure. That's a pretty good locate right there. I would probably book him immediately. <laughs> I mean, if I needed to. Yeah. See how he flipped it right over to you. <laughs> that sounds real good. Yeah. Bob. All right, three 
vraiment. You got any big hunts coming up you're gonna be putting him in? Actually, we got two weeks off, which is very, very nice. Because <laughs> we've been running so hard. So nothing this weekend or the following weekend. And then the 9th and 10th um, of June is the, the pro sport um, truck hunt for the big F-150 Black Widow hunt. Okay. That's the $93,000 sticker truck there. So that's over in Illinois. And then honestly, I'm not sure after that i haven't paid much attention because then me and gwen and john and suzanne are going on a alaskan cruise Ooh. june 19th for it's a seven night eight day cruise so that's right during the big pkc hundred thousand dollar michael moody hunt we're not going to be able to go to that because we're going to be gone so. yeah that'll be but, a good time though oh man <laughs> i can't wait we like we like to go on cruises, but we've never we've always been on Caribbean cruises, but never in Alaskan. But John's been on the Alaskan cruise, and he uh, several years ago he he liked it. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, I you know it don't bother me to slow down in July and August. These hunts. Yeah. It's, <laughs> there he is. Yeah, it gets rough. It's uh, uh it's so hot and the bugs are so bad. So yeah, July and August are my two least favorite times to hunt. <laughs> I think that's most people. Yeah. Pretty good track there. Was a good track. Yeah. Good boy, Bob. <laughs>